In this video, I'm going to talk about these pens, the Pilot Parallel, which is a popular tool for calligraphy and how it could easily be modified to make an expressive tool for drawing. For those unfamiliar with Pilot Parallel pens, it's a somewhat unique system in that instead of a traditional nib, it has two parallel plates with ink channeling between them. This type of nib puts down a very clean, sharp line, which is excellent for calligraphy, that almost looks like it was done not with a pen, but with some kind of printer tool. The shape of the nib, however, makes it very difficult to draw with. You can put down an extra, extra fine line, which is a little bit scratchy, but perfectly doable. But if you want to make some kind of line transition, you need to keep these plates parallel to the direction of the stroke. So I can go like this, and then if I want to go a little bit wider, I'm going to rotate the pen a little bit. But the sharpness of the corner makes that difficult. Now, it can put down this kind of broken line if you press on one side more than the other, like so, so that the plates are only partially making contact with the paper. But as varied and expressive as that line is, it's probably too difficult to control to be of any real use for drawing representationally, unless you're doing something really super expressionistic. In which case, go nuts. Uh, I think it creates a pretty cool effect. But the really neat thing about these pens is that these metal plates are fairly thin and over the years calligraphers have found that you can modify this nib into lots of different shapes. Sometimes cutting out little grooves on the top so that the pen puts down multiple lines at once. Sometimes the nib is cut diagonally. Uh, and to my mind the most interesting for us artists is what's called a ruling pen modification that looks like this. So here the plates are cut in a semicircle. The advantage here is that now you can easily adjust line width by simply changing the angle of the pen. So if I want to put down an extra fine line, I can still use that same corner. It's still doable. A little scratchy. But we're not dealing with a traditional nib here. So um, it works pretty well. And then if I rotate the pen around like this, I can go wider. So vertical, an extra fine line, then changing the angle a little bit. Very similar to the way you would create line variation with a Fude nib. Except here, the line variation is even greater, depending on how well you do the modification. Now, also because of the curvature, the lines are slightly rougher edged, a little more irregular. Um, so you can see that there's kind of like this scratchiness to the line, which is kind of unique. Um, and then something really unique to this modification is that when I speed up the stroke, the line width becomes even rougher. Uh, let me do it with the wider modification where it's a little more visible. So if I slow down, the lines are somewhat irregular. And then if I speed up, the lines become even more distressed. I guess it also depends on the roughness of the paper. But look, this paper is medium tooth. It's relatively smooth. And it still creates a really interesting distressed stroke. This extra element of control can be used to create all kinds of really interesting textural effects and I think is unique to this modification. Now, another thing that I really like about these Pilot Parallel pens is that they are really cheap, running around $10. So there's not much risk of making the modification uh, and ruining the pen. Uh, the pen body itself is very practical. You can use the pen with one of your Pilot standard cartridges. Uh, here, I have one like this. Um, and it actually comes with two. You can also use it with any one of the Pilot converters. Uh, it works really well. I've got a Pilot converter, I believe, in this one. Let me see. Yeah. Let's see what I have here. This is the Con40 converter, which I don't like, but works well with this parallel pen. Um, the other thing you could do is you can put a little bit of silicone grease here and perhaps a rubber o-ring if you find, find one the right size and then fill the entire pen body because it's solid doesn't have any holes in it with ink which is a really good option to eyedropper this pen uh, because it goes through ink quite quickly this is a very wet writer the other thing you can do which i think is really great is that you can take this nib pop it out and put it into any one of the Opus 88 converters that take number six 
Yovo nibs. So here I've got this uh, six millimeter plate that's already been converted and it's popped into an Opus 88 demonstrator. Uh, this happens to be the Jazz model. Um, again, the modification is very easy, so you can just pop the nib out. And let's see, let's do it with another modification here. Okay, so I popped it out of the pile parallel and I can plop it in. You see, it just goes in and out uh, really easily. <clears throat> So once again, this happens to be the Jazz model, but I also have two other Opus 88s that this can be done to. So I've got this one. This is just the Opus 88 demonstrator. This is the clear version of the Opus 88 Omar. Uh, both of them will fit this modification perfectly well. Um, and all these pens are really good options because they hold a tremendous amount of ink, and then they're demonstrators, so you can see exactly what kind of ink and how much ink is in the pen. Um, all pretty oversized pens with really good ink capacity. Okay, so let me show you how this modification actually works. Um, the idea is, uh, so imagine here is, let's see, I'm gonna make sure you guys are actually seeing this. Here is a blown up version of the Pilot Parallel nib. It goes like this. And what you want is to create, I guess, kind of like a parabolic curve that looks like this. Actually, this way, right? The idea is that here on the top, only one little portion of the nib is making contact with the paper. And then as I turn the angle downward, more and more of the paper makes contact because the curve here is gradually flatter and flatter and flatter. So if we make contact here, it's gonna create a slightly wider line. Here it's gonna be even wider because more of the paper is making contact. And ideally, if you do this modification right, you're gonna get a super wide line by the time you get to this angle. So here towards the tip, we can get an extra fine line. And then here, a little bit wider, a little bit wider, a little bit wider, wider still, and then if I hold the pen really flat, we get something that looks up, something that looks like that. Up. Now, in practice, getting the curve perfect is a little bit difficult, but the process is not nearly as complex as nib grinding, which requires a lengthy apprenticeship with a nib meister to learn. You can do the mod, and then if it's not exactly right, continue tinkering with it until it's what you want without really risking ruining the pen. Uh, look, that's not really the case with regular nib, where you can easily damage it beyond repair if you don't know what you're doing. Now, of course, as simple as this modification is, I should include the disclaimer that if you modify the pen, it's absolutely at your own risk. So don't come asking me for a refund if you screw up your precious Pilot Parallel pens. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the mod. Uh, pay close attention. It's not that complicated, but there's a few little tricks that you need to know. Okay, I think I have everything I need to do the job. I've got my Dremel tool, and hopefully what is the right bit for the job. Then I've got sandpapers, different grades, 400 grit, I've got 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, 12,000 grit, and then, and I'm not sure whether I'm gonna need it or not, I've got some Mylar paper, one micron and 0.3 micron. Um, I've got the pen already marked off with the curve that I want, and now I'm gonna hold it against the block, Got a little wooden block here. Let's do it this way here. And let's see if I can create the right cut. Okay, let's see what I've done here. All right, so pretty close. Now let's see if we can sand off some of these sharp corners and smooth this thing out. Okay, so I'm liking the look of this. Let's take a look. Oh, you can see it better on the black sandpaper. Now let's see if we can smooth this out a little bit. We're going to switch to the 2000 grit here. OK, 
Okay. I'm just going to round out the curve here a little bit. They round out the tip a little bit. Okay, that feels very nice and smooth. Okay, now let's switch to the micro mesh. Okay, so here is my finished product. Uh, maybe it's a little easier to see on dark paper. Um, these Pilot Parallels come with a little shim to clear out any kind of gunk, ink. This might be really good to clean out after doing this job, clean out any potential gunk here. Oh yeah, a lot of gunk inside here. Okay, so let's give my ruling pen modification a try. I already have it installed in an Opus 88 Jazz Demonstrator pen. And let's try it. Okay, so vertical stroke. Ooh, it's pretty wide. Let's go a little more vertical. Okay, not too bad. And now let's change the angle a little bit. Change the angle a little more. Okay, so it looks like it's not going any wider going this way. Uh, the feeling is pretty smooth. Uh, let's try this in reverse. Okay, it's not working in reverse. Okay, a little bit. It's very scratchy. It looks like the tines are a little bit misaligned. So I'm going to take a look at it under the loop and make sure that things are lined up. Um, okay, let's see if this smooths things out. Oh yeah, a lot smoother. Okay, so I think probably what I need to do is remove this little bump right here, which is preventing the line from going wider as I flatten the angle. So I think that's going to be the next step. Let me do that. Uh, I don't think I need to remove this from the, the nib. Let's just do it this way. Okay, so let's see if that little bit Okay, yeah, it looks like it's giving me a pretty wide line. Okay, pretty smooth, um, except for the tip, which I might have to correct a little bit. Uh, the reverse, uh, it's working. Pretty smooth. Look, these pens definitely have a sweet spot, right? So you want to make sure that the tines are perfectly lined up with the paper. It's not like a ball-tipped fountain pen nib where you can kind of rotate it and still create a line. Right? With these, you do want to make sure that the nib is lined up with the paper. Okay, now I'm going to try doing the same modification with a slightly wider Pilot Parallel Pen, the 3.8 millimeter. By the way, kids, uh, don't forget your safety goggles when you're using a Dremel. Really important. All right, so let's see what I have so far. Okay, so it looks like I've got the shape that I want. Now let's try sanding it. Okay, now let's try the micro mesh. Okay, so now let's try changing these nibs. So this was the 2.4 millimeter nib, 2.4. And let's pop this out. Pop this out. And let's switch these. Okay, it goes right in. Let's give this a little shake. It also helps on these jazz to open up the main reservoir, which makes the ink flow a little better. There it goes. Okay. So let's try vertical stroke. Works perfectly. Well, 
almost there, right? Almost perfectly. There it goes. Okay, let's try the reverse. Okay, reverse is very thin. Good, which is what I was looking for. And now let's try shifting angles from vertical to slightly flatter, flatter still, flatter still, flatter still. Okay. All right, so st still not getting the super, super wide stroke that I want when the angle's really flat. But again, I think this is going to take a little bit of practice. I think we need to flatten out the curve a little bit more. And really wide. Okay, so all this stuff here, right, is going to be the, what width is this? This is the 3.8. Uh, these three modifications were pretty easy to make. Uh, altogether, if I wasn't filming, they'd probably take me under 20 minutes. And all that's required is some really basic tools. You need a Dremel, and then it turns out that the bit that I chose actually worked pretty well. This is the Dremel heavy duty cutoff wheel number 420. I think I bought 20 pieces for under $10, relatively inexpensive. Uh, and then you need some sandpaper. Um, I used 400 grit, and then I moved up to, let's see what this is. Okay, so this is 1,000 grit, then I went to 2,000 grit, and then you can order this at uh, gooliapens.com and other places. Um, this is a micro mesh with 12,000 grit. Now I'm going to do a drawing sample with our 6mm nib modification. I've already done one with a 3.8, and I think it turned out okay, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what this very wide, wet nib can do. I'm able to start my drawing with a very fine line by holding the pen at the corner with the curved side up. That corner was originally quite sharp, so I gave it a few passes with a micro mesh to smooth it out. One thing to keep in mind is that this nib really needs to be held with the plates at a right angle to the paper. So long as you do that, the line will go down very smoothly. If I change the angle, the lines will be rough. So for instance, if I hold the pen side to side as opposed to flush with the paper. The feeling of working with this pen is strange. It's a little bit like working with a brush, but with much more control. In fact, it feels like I'm working with several brushes and pens at the same time. As soon as I shift the angle downward, the response is huge, with the line width opening up tremendously. The feeling of the pen changes. It actually starts writing wetter, and I find myself paying very close attention to the kind of line quality being created. And I really like the fact that it's sensitive to the speed of the stroke. By the way, I have this pen filled with a really nice gray ink that I bought recently. It's made by Pilot and is the Aroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. My apologies for what I'm sure is a mis mispronunciation. Um, I really love this ink. I've been using Lexington Gray for a number of years and will continue to do so because of its tremendous waterproof qualities. But this gray is a little bit lighter, more transparent, and a touch more purple. It's just such a lovely color. By the way, I think using a lighter value transparent ink is optimal for this pen because it gives you more control over the values. When I first started working with this pen, it definitely felt awkward, but now it's getting easier and easier. I think once you get a feel of what angle you need to get what line width you want, it starts becoming second nature. I really love the 6mm mod, it's very juicy, though because the curve is a little more round, the change in line variation is perhaps not quite as consistent as the 3.8 modification. Of course, if you don't have the tools and don't feel like tinkering, you can always buy an excellent modification online from the Toronto Pen Company, which provides excellent service and also offers fountain pen nib modifications and repair. It's highly recommended, I'll include a link to this company below. I hope you enjoyed this video on this relatively simple pen modification to the Pilot Parallel. Once again, this way of drawing takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, you should start seeing some interesting results. Also, keep in mind that making things difficult for yourself is not such a bad thing. I'm a big fan of discomfort when it comes to art making. I think you should always be seeking new ways of doing things and creating problems to solve in your art. In physical exercise, there's a concept called muscle confusion, which means doing exercises in ways that your body is not used to, which triggers growth. I believe the same principle extends to art making. Trying new methods and materials forces you to think and work in different ways and triggers artistic development. I for one have been drawing with this pen for about a week and already see improvement in the way I'm controlling the pen and putting down lines. And though I know more practice is needed, I'm enjoying the learning process and the results. Thank you for watching, and of course, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below, and I'll be happy to reply.